Hello, and welcome to VTiger's CRM tour for a customer service agent. My name is Josh Rich, and I am a customer success specialist here at VTiger. I'm very excited to show you some of the tools and features in VTiger CRM that helps to streamline communications within your teams and with your customers, resolve customer issues promptly, and ultimately increase customer retention and happiness as we give you a CRM tour for a customer service agent using VTiger 9. So I wanna start off by briefly going over the agenda. I'm gonna start off by showing some slides and discussing some of the advantages and value that VTiger CRM adds to your support team. Then after that, I'm gonna run through a few more slides that will detail some of the features that will benefit your support team and that our support team here at VTiger relies on heavily during the course of our days. Lastly, I'm gonna jump into a VTiger instance and give a live demo that walks you through a scenario of a support agent starting their day by logging into VTiger and then how that agent can access and handle cases in the CRM. So let's get started. This slide is more for admins on an account, but I thought it would be useful to show this before we dive into the rest of the slides. So defining a clear flow in your support process is an important first step while using a CRM for all issues that your support team will need to tackle and resolve. So admins can clearly define a flow by defining the case stages from new to resolved, defining first response and resolution time SLAs, and setting up assignment rules to automatically assign cases to agents. This helps by setting clear expectations and having all of your support agents following the same process. So we will be going into more admin capabilities and further defining the flow in your support process in the next webinar of the series called CRM Tour for a Customer Service Manager. Next, I wanna talk about some agent advantages. So some of the out of the box advantages to using VTiger CRM in your support process are that all users can create custom lists to focus on relevant cases or cases that are most important to them. They'll also be able to see all other cases from the same contact. So this is really useful if you need to reference any previous cases that this contact has had, or if there are any reoccurring issues that need to be addressed. They can also set the case priority based on the issue and urgency and satisfy and exceed customer expectations by fulfilling SLAs. They can also avoid any collisions with their colleagues. So what I mean by this is that cases are clearly assigned to users and you can see all interactions between um, their teams and the customer on a case. You can also assign cases to leads or other colleagues for escalated issues. And you can collaborate with others to resolve issues faster by using the at mentions feature. They can also see customer ratings of handled chats and cases, which is really useful to get real-time feedback on the customer's or contact's um, perception of how they feel the representative handled that issue or question. So by enabling your team with the tools they need and setting them up for success, you'll immediately see the value in using our CRM to help manage your, your support team while assisting them to provide excellent customer service. So let's discuss the real value on this next slide. So by implementing a clear support process and discovering some of the advantages your agents will have while using VTiger, you'll immediately recognize the following benefits and ultimate value listed on this slide. So it will allow your customers to get the most out of your product or service, which ultimately um, increases customer loyalty, increases customer satisfaction, and helps to build brand value with happy customers. So at the end of the day, all this will contribute to reducing customer churn. I also wanna point out some interesting stats published by Forbes. So according to Forbes, 96% of customers say customer service is important in their choice of loyalty to a brand. Loyal customers are also five times more likely to purchase again and four times more likely to refer a friend. So now that we've gone over some of the advantages and value, let's jump into some of the features. So I wanted to start with the actions page because the actions page acts as your personal assistant to help you stay on top of your work. You'll be able to track and receive updates about your activities as well as your teams, view any app mentions to collaborate with your colleagues, track how customers engage with your emails, and set up custom rules to receive alerts about anything that concerns you or anything that's relevant to you. Here is a screenshot of the actions page. So right now we are viewing the app mentions section so you can see some collaboration um, between these users here. Um, we also have the My Actions tab, which will show any upcoming or overdue tasks. We have the Updates tab, which will show you any updates that have been performed by users on um, records. And we have our Engagements tab, 
which will show you any engagement such as opens, replies, downloads, and reshares that the recipient of any emails you've sent has performed. You can also click on the comment button here to make an ad hoc comment that will not be linked to any record. And lastly, we have the configure alert rules button, which will allow you to set your activity alerts, engagement alerts, and mention alerts, and decide how you would like to receive those alerts, whether that's via desktop, email, or both, which is a great way to ensure you always stay on top of anything that needs your attention. You can also add and create your own custom alerts as well. Next, we have the cases module. So cases are any kind of customer service request. So cases really provide a great way to track and respond to any is uh, customer issues promptly, and they can be linked to a product, asset, contact, organization, or a task record. Reps can also view related cases for the same organization or contact, um, which is really helpful um, to gather any relevant information about any previous cases that have been opened related to that contact or organization, which will um, ultimately help to resolve issues faster. You can also create tasks from cases and assign them to other users or groups for any escalated issues. Here we have a screenshot um, of the cases module in list view. So you can see here we have our columns with our created date, our case title, the case status, the resolution due date, the priority of the case, and who that case is assigned to, which user it's assigned to. Um, these columns are customizable, so you can rearrange these or add columns that you, that you find are, is relevant um, or useful, or you can remove columns as well. Here is the summary view of the cases module. So when you actually open up a case record and go into it, um, you'll get a nice overview um, in, the, in the key fields and header section up here. We can see that this is assigned to this user here. We can see the priority of the case is medium and the SLA status, there's still time left on the SLA. Um, you can also see over here um, with calculus, we can see our first response is due, when it's due, when the resolution is due, the SLA status and the SLA name. Up in the right hand corner here, we have one view, which is gonna show all related records to this case. Um, so we can see down here, we have um, a related case um, here and we'll also be able to see related contacts and organizations, et cetera, while using OneView. Here we have our activity section on the case. So this is where you can post any comments, mention other users, which you can see right here, there's a little note that's taken um, in the activity section. You can reply to this case uh, via email, which will send an email to um, the contact who uh, is associated with this case. And then we have our filters in the activity section as well. So the filters really help you dial in if you're just wanting to view comments um, or mentions, or if you're just wanting to view emails or you're wanting to view all activity, you can really dial it in using the filters button as well. Next, we have our live chat module. So VTiger live chat helps you and your clients have real-time conversations. Um, with your sales, marketing, and I believe most importantly, your customer service team. You can install VTiger Live Chat on your website or blog page, and agents can view and respond to incoming messages from the chat window that can be accessed from Live Chat. You'll also be able to review and email transcripts of all the chats, which is really helpful um, if you've had a long conversation with a, with a customer and you've laid out some detailed instructions and you wanna send them a transcript of that chat so they have all the documentation um, of that chat. It's really simple and easy to use um, and to send to your customers. Or if you just want to review the transcript for yourself to improve, um, to improve your reps responses. You'll also be able to review customer ratings and client feedback to review um, how your responses were and how to help improve your performance. This is a screenshot of the live chat module. So we can see here, um, we have Mark who came into the live chat. This is the body of the live chat where you can see some back and forth between Mark and the representative. Um, we also have one view as well, so we can see the related contact and some key information about them. And we can also quickly jump into that contact record as well. Um, or it will also show ca related cases as well. So you can jump into the contact record or any related cases. So you can really get quick reference um, to help resolve any issues that this customer has come in with, 
or find any relevant information to what they're inquiring about. You can also click here on these three dots to open a menu where you can schedule a, a, a meeting, you can add a case, you can select um, a case to relate this chat to, you can mark this case as open, or you can transfer this, cat, this chat to um, any other users who are available in the live chat module. And then ultimately you can end the chat from, these, from this menu as well. Next, we have our phone calls module. Um, so our phone calls module will allow you to communicate with your customers directly from your CRM screen. And our phone call, calls module connects VTiger um, to hosted telephony services such as Twilio, Plevo, Asterix, Vici Dial, Exotel, and Nolarity. And you'll be able to click to call straight from a record. So this feature allows the user um, to make a call to any number just by clicking on the number associated with the record in the lead, contact, organization, or phone calls module. You'll also be able to take notes in the activity section for future reference, and you'll be able to review um, your call recordings to improve performance or review any issues that have happened. Here we have an image of the um, phone call pop-up. So this is the pop-up that will appear when making any outgoing phone calls or when receiving calls in the CRM. And this is the notes section right here um, where your agents can take notes that will then be stored in the phone call record. And you can see related um, deals and cases as well, allowing your reps to um, get caught up in any activity regarding that contact or prospect that you're having the call with. So we can see our related deals and our related cases. Next, we have our phone call list view. So again, these, are, these columns are customizable, um, but you'll be able to see the call status. Here's a link to the recording customer number, which, which agent handled the call, the customer name, et cetera. So you can really customize this, um, get all that relevant information you need just straight from the list view of the phone calls module. Lastly, we have the summary view of the phone calls. Um, so if you go into a phone calls record, you'll be able to see the phone number, who handled that call, um, any activity associated with it. Here we have, again, some app mentions um, going back and forth between some users. And once again, one view in the upper right where we can see any related contacts or deals, et cetera, to this phone call. Next, we have our appointment pages. So appointment pages really help to um, help you avoid the hassle of scheduling meetings through back and forth emails. It allows your prospects to schedule appointments by booking a convenient time of their choosing by viewing the agent's availability. This really helps to avoid double bookings because it will automatically block a user's calendar when an event is created. And availability is also based on the user's business hours, scheduled breaks, and time off. On this next screen here, um, you can see VTiger has three different types of appointment pages, the Meet Me, Auto Signed, and Group Event. So the Meet Me page helps you in creating a one-to-one -one meeting um, between a customer and a user. The auto assigned helps you in creating a link for a meeting that can be auto assigned to an available member of a group. And the group event, which helps you in creating a meeting or link for larger events such as webinars, um, workshops, et cetera. Here is a screenshot of the appointment page link from the customer's perspective. So once they open the link, they'll be able to see who they're gonna be meeting with. Um, and the available time slots that are open for them to select to book a meeting. Next, after the meeting has been created, um, we have our events module. So this is the list view of the events module. So it's a really quick way um, for your agents to view any meetings that are up and coming. Um, it'll, it'll specify the start date and end time, um, also the status of the event, who's handling the meeting, um, and the subject of the meeting as well. So again, a really great way to just make sure that you're staying on top of things, you're not gonna miss any meetings um, and that you have clearly defined what's laid out for you um, regarding meetings for the, the week, month, et cetera. So next I wanna talk about the FAQs module. So FAQs or frequently asked questions are commonly asked questions about a process or a business. FAQs are written in pairs of questions and answers, and you can easily create FAQs out of the questions your customers ask 
if you think it might be useful to other customers um, or to your team. FAQs can be published on a customer portal or a website to give all of your customers and support teams easy access. Next is the articles module. So while FAQs in VTiger answer your customers' queries more quickly, articles will provide long form help content. So the articles module in VTiger is a really easy and excellent way to share any announcements, product updates, technical instructions, or really any documentation with your customers or team. You can aid your customers with in-depth knowledge about anything regarding your business and its workings. Here is VTiger's mobile app, which is available for Android and Apple, and it allows your agents to stay in the loop and complete tasks on the go. So agents can respond to or update cases, collaborate with colleagues using app mentions, and receive notifications on anything that needs to be addressed from anywhere at any time. So the last slide I have before I start the demo is on VTiger's AI engine called Calculus. So we will be doing a future webinar that dives deeper into the functionality and features of Calculus, but I wanted to point out two ways Calculus can help support agents. So with conversation analysis, recommendations on next, next best actions and intelligent nudges, Calculus AI empowers your employees to work smarter. The two features I wanna briefly discuss are Calculus's email reply assistant and best time to contact. So the email reply assistant, it's a real game changer as it helps support team members be on top of their customer conversations with suggestions on content to send when replying to emails. So for example, for example, Calculus could recommend a help document or other relevant content that pertains to the customer's email. The best time to contact is another uh, feature of Calculus that analyzes historical data and correlates data points from a myriad of sources to recommend the best time to contact someone. So for example, this can be really useful if you need to request important information from a customer, um, lock down a meeting, or you just don't want your email to be buried if it was sent in the middle of the night or at an odd hour. Okay, so now that we've gone through some of the features and tools in VTiger CRM, let's jump into my instance and see some of these features in action. So we are now inside of my VTiger V9 test instance, and I'm gonna run us through a scenario that a support representative uh, might typically face on a daily basis. Um, so from when they first log into the CRM to addressing a case and then ultimately escalating that case and resolving the case as well. Um, so to start with by default, when your representatives log in, they're gonna land on the dashboard page. And now this dashboard is um, personalized for every representative. So each representative can customize this dashboard as well. Um, and they can add widgets such as um, a standard widget, which is gonna be a default widget um, that VTiger has or any sort of lists or charts or a sticky note as well. You can add in there um, just by clicking on the add widget button up here. So to start with, I'm gonna look at um, the first widget I have, which is my open cases. So these are gonna be any cases that are assigned to me. Um, it's gonna give me the title of the case, the status, priority. It's also gonna give me links to the contact record, the organization record, and it's gonna show me when um, the resolution due date is due as well. Um, so this is a great way if I just wanna quickly jump into a contact record um, regarding this case, I can jump in here, um, or if I wanna jump into the case itself. Next, um, we have all outstanding cases. So these are gonna be any cases that are assigned to um, not only myself, but other members of my team as well. So it's a good way to just get um, some insight into what's going on um, with the other colleagues in your support team. I also have a, a list of my contacts. So these are gonna be contacts that are assigned to me. Um, and another great way to just jump right into their record, or I can click right here to send them an email or click on their phone number to click to call straight from the CRM. So moving down, um, some other widgets I have are my meetings this week and my meetings this month. So this will give me a nice um, preview of anything that's up and coming so I can make sure I'm on top of any meetings that I need to be a part of. Um, so I can see today I have a meeting at 11 a.m. and then a meeting tomorrow and then also on the second here as well. Um, this will give me my meetings this month, so this will only be meetings um, for the month of March. And so again, just a great way to start your day and just make sure that you're not going to miss anything um, that needs your attention and that you're going to be able to attend any meetings that you are involved in. 
I also have a list of my organizations that are assigned to me. So if your support team does any sort of account management, um, just a really great way to have a list of all of your accounts in one place. So moving back up to this first widget here to my open cases, um, the first thing I notice is I do have a case that's been assigned to me. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna open this case and go right into the case record. So I can see um, the title of the case here, which is software issue has returned. So when this customer wrote into our support email address, um, it took the subject of his email and turned it into the case title. Um, this is something that I can edit if I want to, but it's pretty clear um, that a software issue has returned. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna accept this case. So now that I've accepted the case and take full ownership of it, um, you can see that it's set to a medium priority right here. It's assigned to me and it's regarding this contact, Ernie Anastasio. Um, so since the title of the case says software issue returned, um, I'm gonna first read over the email that was sent in um, by this customer. So he says here that he recently reached out to support regarding a software issue um, and that the team had applied a fix. And he said that everything was working well um, until just recently the issue returns and he wants to schedule a meeting to discuss this further. Um, he also says he's available all day today, so that's a good thing. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna sort of pick this apart and say that he had recently reached out um, regarding a software issue. So up here, we have our one view, which is gonna show us all um, related cases to this customer, um, Ernie Anastasio. So I can see right here, um, I have, this is software is slow again, um, and it's been resolved. So I actually wanna jump into this case. And if I scroll down here, I can see that this is the first one he reached out with, which is issues with software. So it looks like this has been an ongoing thing for this customer. So we wanna make sure that we resolve this quickly. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually just go right into this related case record and take a look and see what's happened um, in this case to where it was marked as resolved. Okay, so we're, we're in this case now. Um, this case is resolved, so it's gonna be in a closed state pretty soon here once it, once it goes to close. Um, but what I'm gonna to wanna to do first is I'm gonna look at the activity on this case and look at any emails that have been sent or any um, at mentions, which is gonna be internal comments and communication um, between our support team. So a great way to do this is to use the filters um, button here. So I'm gonna start off with by just looking at um, the emails that this customer has sent. So by clicking on emails only, it's gonna just pull up the emails in the activity section. And I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom. Um, looks like he reached out to support, experiencing issues with his software. Um, and then it can see that I've updated um, the customer here that we're looking into it um, and that we have applied a fix the customer has then confirmed that everything's working correctly. And we can also open these up and expand um, on the emails as well, but it's gonna give you just a quick preview um, of the email in the activity section. All right, so the last email is from me actually confirming and thanking him for confirming that um, everything's working correctly. And then I'm gonna close this case, um, but so the customer has reached out. So the next thing I'm gonna wanna do is see if there's any internal communications um, from my team that can give me a little bit more insight into this case. So I'm gonna click on internal comments and only internal comments. That's all I wanna see right now. So I'm just reviewing what I sent, um, took notes of, and then I can see I reached out to my colleague, Mike Gordon, um, asking if this is a bug or an issue on our end. I can see that Mike has confirmed that this is an issue on our end and that our team has applied a fix for it. And he's asking me to let the customer know that the issue is resolved. And then I'm right here, I'm thanking Mike for that information and that I'm gonna inform the customer. Okay, so it looks like it was a bug the last time um, that this customer reached out. So likely it's gonna be a similar situation. Um, so by just quickly jumping into that related case, I'm able to get all the knowledge I need um, of what was previously done to resolve the issue in the first place. And now I can go back to the original case 
um, that um, Ernie has just reached out with here. So in Ernie's email here, um, I can see that he wants to schedule a meeting to discuss this further and that he's available all day today. So what I'm gonna do straight from the case record here is I'm gonna create an event and send it to Ernie. So I'm gonna log a meeting, which is gonna create an event. It's gonna block out this time on my calendar and I can also send an invite to Ernie inviting him to the meeting. So we'll give it a name to this. Um, Ernie's available all day, so we're gonna get this started as soon as we can. So we have the start time and the end time, should only take about a half an hour. Um, the activity type is gonna be a meeting, uh, but we have several different options here as well. So I'll click on meeting. Um, and then in the agenda, I am going to um, paste in a Zoom link here so that Ernie can quickly join. And then I'm also going to um, just click on save on the bottom here, which is gonna prompt me to send um, an invite to all the invitees. So you can see that Ernie Anastasio has already been pulled in as an invitee since we created this event from the case record um, related to Ernie Anastasio. So we'll click send. And now this event has been created. Um, so once you know Ernie joins the meeting and we'll assume that we've held this meeting now, um, we can go back to, we can go to, into the events module here and click on the event that I just created and we'll mark it as held. So now we can say that the meeting has been held. It's also gonna give a happiness rating here of how the meeting went. Um, so I can, you know, I'll give it a smiley face here. There is some issues, but the meeting went well and Ernie was satisfied that we're gonna get this resolved quickly. So I'll select this smiley face, hit submit. And you can see the smiley faces up here, um, which just you know denotes that this, this, the meeting went well and that the customer is happy at this point. Um, so going back into the cases module and back into Ernie's case, um, you know, I just met with him, he shared his screen. I got some more insight into what the issue is and it does look like it's the same issue as before, um, but we need to resolve this immediately because this is the third time that Ernie has reached out with this issue. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the priority of this case and I'm gonna change it from medium to urgent. So this will not only change the SLA um, and time that's um, given to resolve it, it's now giving me and my team three hours to resolve it. Um, but it's also gonna notify if anybody's looking at this case, if the other team members that are helping to resolve this issue, they know that this is an urgent matter and it really needs everybody's attention. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to mention um, Mike Gordon. You remember from the previous related case, Mike and I had collaborated on the last issue and he helped to resolve it. So I'm gonna let Mike know that this issue is happening again and um, to please address it ASAP. So I'll Put the at symbol there, it'll pull up a list of my, my colleagues. We'll select Mike Gordon's name. Okay, so I'm gonna make this comment. And once I hit click on the comment button here, Mike is gonna receive a notification in the CRM himself. And he's also gonna receive an email. So um, there's gonna be two different ways that Mike receives this notification saying that um, there's an issue, which is also gonna provide a link directly to this case as well. So I'll uh, click on the comment button here. And the comment was posted successfully. Um, these comments are internal, so just, um, Myself and my team will be able to see these and any admins, of course. Um, but so I'm, I feel comfortable. I know that I've notified Mike. I've also escalated this case to urgent. Um, if I need to, if I feel like this needs an extra uh, task generated with it, I can also click up here on the three dots um, and schedule a task. Um, and I'm gonna 
give this a name of fix bug for Ernie. And I'm gonna assign it to Mike Gordon because he's in charge of fixing all the bugs for our team. And I'm also gonna give a due date of today. And I'm gonna say 2 p.m. Oh, missing a zero here, 2 p.m. Um, the stage is gonna be pending. So once Mike picks up this task and starts to work on it, he can change it to in progress. And once he completes it, he can mark it as completed and let me know as well. And I'm also gonna mark this as high as well um, and mark the task type down here as repair. Um, in the description field, I can also type in something if I wanna describe exactly what's going on. Um, for the case, for the sake of time here, I'll skip, I'll skip typing in a description, um, but Mike's gonna know from my previous comment over here that this issue, um, the software issue has happened again and it needs to be addressed. So I can hit save right here. Oh, I need to also do the stage. So um, we'll say we're collecting info. Okay, so now this task has been created um, for Mike to work on this issue. Once Mike, um, so since Mike is working on this issue, I'm gonna change the status of this case right here to wait for third party. So I'm waiting for Mike to come back and let me know that the issue has been fixed. Um, and we'll go ahead and just assume that Mike has now reached back out to me. He's made a comment um, on the task that I created and also on this record, on this case record saying that the issue has been fixed and to please update Ernie. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna write um, an email back to Ernie saying that the issue has been resolved and then I'm gonna close this case. So by clicking on the reply button within the case, it's gonna pull in um, our contact's email address. It's also gonna pull in the subject from the case title. And I'm gonna send this email off to Ernie. And so any anytime that uh, Ernie responds to this email, everything's gonna be held within this case record as well. Um, so it's all gonna say right here, and it's also gonna be related to this contact's name as uh, contact record as well. So I'll just say, hi, Ernie. issue you were facing. Has been resolved. Thank you. And so what it's going to do when I go to send this email, it's going to prompt me to change the status of this case. Um, so what I'll do is I will say, I'm going to put this case back to open for a second. Um, I'm gonna mark it as the category is a defect. Um, the sub a category is gonna be performance. And all of these are pick list values, which you can customize yourself. Um, these are just the default values that come um, when you first sign up for a VTiger instance. So all of this is customizable, um, including the, the names of the status as well. So now I'm ready to mark this case as resolved. Once I hit saved, it's gonna send that email to Ernie and the case is gonna be marked as resolved. So if I go back to the cases module, I can see the case is now resolved, um, which is great because I still have some time left on my um, resolution due time, due date and time. So we're in good shape. Um, so that's it, you know, and there's so many more things that we can do and show, but um, just for today's demo, just wanted to show you um, a quick scenario of what a, a customer, um, support agent would um, go through on a daily basis while using VTiger and how easy it is to see um, related cases and issues um, or to pull up a contacts record and get more insight into um, anything that's anything that's re revolving around that customer or an organization. So jumping back into um, the slides here, I just have two more slides to go through. Um, just to tell you a little bit about what else is, is there in VTiger, um, so we have, you know, many different modules. This is, we're just talking about support today, but we have um, our sales help desk and marketing as well. Um, and, you know, we can go into inventory and projects and user and access control. So there's really so many things that we can talk about that we hope to cover in future webinars. Um, 
But ultimately, we just want you to know how a CRM can really help to simplify um, multiple facets of your company while also helping to automate repetitive tasks as well. Um, so up next will be a video covering features available for a support manager. So we'll go into um, a little bit more of the setup and how to set up SLAs, how to assign cases around Robin. Um, so really more of the backend stuff that a support manager would be um, dealing with. We also would love to know what you'd like to see next. So please send us an email. Um, you can send an email to support at vtiger.com and let us know what you'd like to see um, for any future webinars as well. So thank you very much for joining us today. Um, if you do have any questions, definitely reach out to us. Um, you can reach out to us at um, support at vtiger.com. Um, you can also use our live chat as well, um, or you can call us on our, our US global numbers or our Indian number as well. So thanks again for joining. We hope you found this insightful and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.